So that's uh, about three years of a project that we've, we've done uh, called Architectone. And uh, after that, I went to, um, I start to travel to Brazil and discover some, uh, and to Mexico, and uh, discover some more Latin modern architecture, including the Spacio Esculturico. And uh, Daniel, you are here because you uh, specialize also in uh, <laughs> Matthias Gerrit. And um, what I was interested with is the uh, junction of a certain uh, uh, taste in, in color, in shape, also the relation to native uh, uh, culture in, in, in Mexico and the development of modernity. So maybe you can uh, tell us and tell me more about the, uh, this group of uh, people that, that um, how it happens that the Spacio Esculturico um, has been uh, decided. And uh, for example, I would be interested to know who founded that and who decide for that. Um, and so, you know, uh, the Spacio Esculturico, for people that are not familiar with it, is uh, on the UNAM, uh, the university, uh, uh, which is a huge area of Mexico, and including a lot of uh, very interesting buildings and um, also very interesting public sculpture that happened in the very early 80s. Um, el Espacio Esculturico was a project orchestrated by Gerritz that gathered a lot of other artists. Some of them were uh, his students at one point. Um, well, they, they were like Manuel Felgueres, Federico Silva, Helen Escobedo, Jersua, Sebastián, and Federico Silva. I don't know if I'm repeating names, but I hope so, not. And um, are they, some of them are still living? Yes, yes. Uh, well, Federico Silva is still living. Um, I guess he should be like 97, 98, but he's still living. Um, Felgueres is still alive. Jersua, who was, I think, like the youngest along with Sebastián, is also alive. Um, Helen Escobedo has died, and Geritz, Geritz has died, I think. I think that those two are the only ones that are dead. And Geritz always prays like, collective work in order to get rid of authorship. But the truth is like most of his collaborative projects have always uh, given rise to these uh, polemics about authorship. Yeah. Like La Tor Las Torres de Satélite with Barragán, and in this case, like in El Espacio Escultorico, there are several artists there that claim that that idea was like that his idea. Uh -huh. no. Um, so I, I, I came first time to Mexico uh, one and a half year ago, and I got to the UNAM site, and uh, it was quite funny because it, it, I forgot it was closed because it was the first of May, and it was the last day I could see it. So I have to to say that I jumped the gate and got inside, and so I was on my own in this incredible site, and um, I had the idea to. Um, kind of uh, find a way to refresh the the uh, site with an intervention. So my idea is to cover some of the blocks, or maybe all the blocks, with color top, so fabric. And uh, I made a sketch for that. And then after that, I discovered that uh, Ellen Escobedo made this beautiful uh, drawing in, uh, in color. So do you know what, what was uh, the idea behind Ellen Escobedo's design, or why she done that? Um, Helen Escobedo used to make a lot of um, speculative uh, monuments. 
So, for example, uh, she made like maquettes of some monuments, even like absurd monuments, like the monument to the cigarette, and then made collages of public spaces with these like huge sculptures in the shape of a cigarette or that kind of stuff. So I think this take on the Espacio Escultorico is one of these like between absurd and humorous projects, in this case like an intervention in which she imagined, the drawing is called like the Espacio Escultorico in Technicolor. So I think it's, it's more about that, like this, I think she never attempted to make like a final project out of it. It was more like a speculation and something humorous on the Espacio Escultorico. And um, <coughs> so you, you invite me to make this lecture, but also um, you, uh, I've been invited to take part to the art fair with a solo presentation with my gallery Andrei Shipchenko from Stockholm. And um, so I got here a month ago and I worked on small pieces, a little bit like the same kind of the ones that you can see here. That This is a view of my studio in Paris. And where we, we're working with a team, with a Violetta and with a team of about 10 people in the studio. So it's more like an uh, agency for um, architecture or something like that in, the, in the, the structure of the studio. But I need some time to get back to the shop and work actually on the pieces. And um, so I started to work on, um, on pieces that I made myself. Uh, during this project Architecton, you saw the film of, the movie of, and, and now it, I, I was started to work with uh, uh, tools that are very simple uh, because I couldn't use power tools in the, in the studio because it was too noisy. And um, so it, just to, to explain that I went back to some very basic things, basic shapes that are close to the architecton designed by Malevich in the early 20s. <coughs> and, um, and this development I keep on doing now with uh, the, those pieces that are shown at the gallery. And all those pieces are shown in a kind of a replica of a dummy of those uh, monoliths, which are actually not monoliths because they are hollow, but uh, they look like monoliths. There are uh, the 64 uh, element of the Spacio Sculpturico. So for me, it's, uh, the, the pre presentation here is also about the idea that, uh, I know that you've been studying that in particular, but uh, the migration of uh, a certain spirit around the world and how uh, the spirit of modernity, of uh, Baragan meeting uh, Le Corbusier and the uh, main modernist architect uh, led to a certain uh, new type of modernism which is very specific for uh, Mexico or Latin America like uh, Lina Bobardi who came from Italy in, to Brazil and uh, so that's why I'm very interested in Matthias Goritz because as an, he was an art historian, but uh, also an artist and a teacher. And uh, the way that he, he worked is a, is a representation of the um, the, ven the joint the venture the the merge between a certain idea of modernism uh, uh, rooted in uh, the Bauhaus, for example, and um, and the the opening to the outside, for example and the open air, the idea of open air, which is stronger here just because of the climate and a certain tradition, so. And um, so my concern is how, for example, they use the lava, lava of uh, lava field in front of the Spacio Sculpturico is very interesting to me because it's a, uh, it's all the um, the sculpture is confronted to the actual landscape, and um, and it's it's. I, I went there yesterday and uh, again to 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 check a few things, and I was very amazed with the quality of the experience of just walking around this area and enjoying not only the pieces but also uh, a kind of a walk 
and which is also very interesting because here there is no limit in the in the no legal limit so it's it's kind of uh, you couldn't do that in America in uh, northern America for example like the piece by Goritz which looked like a pyramid that you could climb on for example and uh, so I'm interested in this environment that is not only the climate and not only the um, the, the legal uh, environment but the combination of all this that is leading to uh, to those uh, typical shape and you have here in Mexico something very unique in the world which is this uh, incredible um, uh, field of uh, sculpture so but no maybe we c I don't know yeah if you if we want to we can turn it into a small discussion if anybody has questions or or we can keep on talking together <laughs> Is there any question on that? Or? Okay, I, I want to. Um, in the video that you show, we had the opportunity to see how you engage with um, different examples of uh, architecture, like canonic architecture, and you revise formal issues, um, historical issues, and even um, make reference to the authors in a play that is very interesting between like pure abstraction and also figuration, for example. Um, uh, you mentioned that you um, wanted to or made this a sketch about covering uh, some of the elements with colors, which I think is a very nice idea, but um, what else do you see like in the landscape or, or which other things do you think you could do or do you imagine or what incites you like all this landscape with these um, other sculptures and elements, natural elements and stuff? Um, well, I think it could be like uh, just in, in integrating new type of plants, for example, or new new species. But uh, the problem with the Spacio Sculturico is that um, what I'm interested in is because of the datation of uh, this. It's almost linked to the time that I was uh, turning to be an artist or beginning of the 80s I start to be interesting in, 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 in art and uh, so it's belong to history but it's also very contemporary and um, so I'm interested in the environment but the environment is changing and uh, we also have to talk about this new building that is built there and as is uh, unfortunately uh, completely changing the skyline, I mean the, the, the landscape with this building popping up. So there is a, a white building on the, on the side that is uh, brand new and uh, that will be inaugurated uh, soon. And that is really a problem visually for the, for the space because it's so, you, when you're in the, in the, in the uh, Spacio Esculturico, you can only see the the pieces and the the, the the horizon line with the beautiful mountains and um, so and this altered really the the environment so but it's pointing that the environment is changing people are changing the for example a few plants are growing on the concrete blocks it's very interesting to see all the nature is uh, is uh, eating back those sculptures. So my idea is to play with this original idea, like a sketch. That's why I want to, to with a formal intervention, bring it back to something that is more linked to the, um, to the original concept like a, a, a thought or even a, a drawing and to try to make it slick and more uh, accurate so and to give a certain uh, idea of um, a link to the original concept 
So, but there is many ways that we, you could um, interact, and I'm also interested in the fact that they organize a lot of parties and uh, music inter musical intervention in the early 80s, and uh, also that people can just walk and uh, sit there, and it's another relation to art, because it's not it's not like you, when you're in a show and you're walking from one piece to another and you look at them. It's more an experience that you are, uh, it's like being in a building, but here it's being in a garden. And uh, so the, the, it's more living with the art than looking at it only. No sé si eh, alguien guste preguntar algo, hacer un comentario. Respecting uh, your job in Espacio Escultorico, and it's very interesting. Uh, all your uh, your things, your thesis. Uh, but I want to know if you have uh, some artists, that your reference uh, in your formation. I, uh, I first got to art with uh, artists that, uh, when I was a kid, like Andy Warhol or Vasarelli, or people that were outside of the field of uh, only contemporary art at the time, but they were reaching a more a broader audience. I wasn't specialized in that, so I got in touch with those artists as a kid, and it was interesting to me. But then. When I first study, start to study art, I, I, my big shock, my big encounter was with minimal art and with conceptual art. And um, actually my own practice is a merge between pop, conceptual and minimal. That's why there is some figurative and non-figurative. But it's always based on an idea that, um, that there is no, as there is no limit between um, uh, figurative art and uh, conceptual art or abstract, there is no limit uh, between the things that um, that are very um, elaborate technically and very simple, for example. And um, art is always, to me, a way to uh, escape the language which is today not a very good example, doing a lecture, but, but uh, it's a way to skip the language. So you can do with art things that, are, that the language can't reach. And uh, for example, the movie you saw is the, all the music is made by Nicolas Godin, one of the two members from Air. And uh, also there is a strong relation to music because the music is like uh, what visual arts can't reach in terms of uh, emotion. So I'm very interested in uh, combining, which is a very 70s idea also, and also like a Black Mountain College or uh, many people at the time, or even the Bauhaus earlier, uh, to combine different fields in art to achieve a more a stronger emotional relation to, uh, to the environment. Algo más? Well, just to finish, I would like to say that also like this idea of integration of the arts, it was also very important for for Gerrit, and he always uh, tried to, although he was not able to do it in all occasions, but to integrate at one point like dance and music to his architecture and sculptural projects. So, um, well, thank you very much for your time and for sharing your work and your next project here in Mexico, which is great. And y a todos ustedes, muchas gracias por venir, gracias a la gente de UNAM por el interés y bueno, a los demás también, muchas gracias.